Dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the greatest joys of my life has been the privilege of being a father. And I think anybody who's been a parent will relate to the idea that being a parent and raising kids or a child is um, wonderful and sometimes challenging. But one of the things that we think about as a parent is that as we raise our children, we want to, we're so protective of them and we want to make sure that, that they grow up and they learn the right things. There's more to growing up than just physically getting older. I mean, a person has to grow up emotionally. A person has to grow up in how they relate to people and their relationship life. Uh, young people have to grow up in a spiritual sense and parents pray and pray and work hard and, and make sure that they're doing all the right things because we want them basically to grow up and be just like we are. Uh, sorry, Peter. <laughs> I remember um, the day after our firstborn, I had a visit from a member of the church and he said, well, now your life is different. And I'll tell you right now that you would do anything for this child, even if it meant running into a burning building to rescue your child, not knowing you were going to make it or not. You don't hesitate, you just do it. That's the kind of protective nature that good parents have. It's a natural thing. We want what's best for our kids. And as I say, there are so many ways and so many challenges of, of so-called growing up well, in this gospel lesson for today, we have a very interesting story of what, what the scripture calls the boy Jesus, about 12 years old. He and his parents had come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover event. That was an annual pilgrimage where they would go and celebrate this miraculous rescue that God had made years ago out of Egypt, bringing his people out of slavery and bringing them into a new land and giving them freedom. And they were at this festival, and it's quite obvious that Mary and Joseph and this boy Jesus had traveled in a group, an entourage of, of pilgrims who had made this journey. And it does seem a little incredible to me that they were on the journey home, and all of a sudden Mary notices that Jesus is missing. Well, he's not in our group here. And so they turned around and they rushed back to um, Jerusalem looking for this child. Oh, they, I can just sense the sense of panic, frantic. And I don't know if you caught it or not, but this gospel lesson points out that after three days, they finally found him. Three days, I can't imagine that. They find him in the temple of all places. And this frantic mother goes up to the boy Jesus and says, Why have you done this to us? And Jesus looks at her as kind of incredulous and he says, Well, don't you understand? I'm, I'm doing my father's work. This is where I'm supposed to be. Now what Jesus was probably really thinking was, Don't you get it, Mom? Don't you remember Gabriel and the angel and, and going to Bethlehem and having this baby in, a, in the stable and, and the wise men and the shepherds? and Don't you remember your husband Joseph had all these wild dreams and told us to go to Egypt to be rescued and we made this trip to Egypt and we escaped a certain death for me? I mean, how could you forget all this? This was all part of God's plan. Just, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, what a great challenge it must have been for Mary and Joseph to experience that and to kind of, be, kind of be put in their place. But I'd like to suggest to you today that yes, this is a story about growing up, but it's not about Jesus growing up. It's about, perhaps more than anyone, Mary and Joseph growing up. Jesus, he'll grow up just fine. He was growing up. He knew who he was. He knew what his mission was. He was growing up. But it was time for Mary and Joseph to grow up a little as well. 
I think as parents sometimes we we get into our own little sphere, our own little world, and sometimes we need to be drawn out so that we can learn new things, have our horizons expanded. There's a lot we can learn from our parents. Uh, my son and I have these hilarious conversations about cars and all the technology, and I shared with him one day that I customized my car. I had a 61 Chevy Bel Air 283 Power Glide. What a sweet car that was. And I got really fancy with that car and I put a speaker in the back window. You could buy the speaker kit, you'd cut a hole in the cardboard, mount the speaker, run the wires, and it had a little bracket for under the front dash. And it, this was really high tech. It had a three-way switch. It said front, back, and both. <laughs> and we'd unscrew the the um, kick plate on the doors, on the bottom of the doors, and we'd run the wires underneath. So we could call it custom installation. Front, back, and both. And then, of course, the big thing in college was the high-tech 8-track um, tape player. You know, 8-tracks are collectible now. I should have kept them. But now, you know, technology changes, and all this language about fruit and apples and blackberries and all this stuff, and I'm still trying to figure out oranges and bananas. So we, we kind of were drawn out, we're forced to learn and grow from our children. But I think this lesson is so uh, appropriate that the focus is the temple. And maybe what this lesson tells us is that as parents and adults, it's really a lesson for all of us, is that we need to focus and grow our relationship with God by getting to the temple. That was the focus of Jesus' life. It was stretching the horizons for Mary and Joseph, that we grow into a deeper relationship with God and with each other as a community of faith. And uh, it's appropriate too on a day like today when we're honoring our college students and maybe a pastoral word to all of our college students and all of our high school students is that you too can use Jesus as a role model. That you should migrate toward the temple uh, to keep your faith active and alive, to move toward the family of God and keep coming into the church because it is here where you can grow up spiritually as well. We become more aware of God's plan for our life we find here, through the Word and the Sacraments, encouragement for our life journey. We find out who we really are as people of God. We find out our identity as people of God. We grow into the faith by continually coming back to the temple. That would be my word to you. And keep praying a life of prayer. Pray for your parents. Have patience with your parents. We're doing the best we can. Um, I'm, it's kind of emotional for me today because this is the last student recognition year that Ellen and I will have a student in the house. And we're going through this process, probably getting into the process really deep now, called empty nest. It was interesting. Um, the first week that Lisa went off to college, a member came up to me and said, you know, Pastor Dave, empty nesting, it, it took me exactly 10 minutes to adjust to that. <laughs> and it's, it's great, and I wouldn't go back. I've had other dads tell me they, they never adjusted, they never got over it. Well, I think we're somewhere in between there. But it's a growing experience, and it draws us to go to that place that is strongest, and most comfortable, the temple. Our faith journey, our faith devotion, our faith commitment seems to get stronger when the kids are off doing their own thing. And we have to learn and get growing into that mindset too. So God bless you students today. God bless all of us. Let's continue to migrate toward the temple. We lift Jesus up as an example. He said, don't you get it? I mean, we're supposed to be about our Father's work. That's the focus of our life. And it draws us out of our little worlds, whatever they might be, and have a broader picture 
so that we can grow in faith for the journey ahead. God bless us all today. Amen.